Hey guys, this is another one of those Anything Goes Saturday, so you never know what I'll be doing today. Uh, I'm starting, though, on working on making a set of shelves. I want to put a set of shelves on this wall here so that I can put all of the filters, oil, cans of motor oil, and things like that that I have because it's starting to get all messed up everywhere, so I'm trying to get a little bit straightened up. I'll be putting shelves up there. So what I'm doing is since I'm working with red oak and I have a lot of it around, I just cut some boards on a 45. I'm going to put them one here and then one up here. And then I'll have two shelves and I'm going to make them 12 foot long. So there'll be a bracket at each end and one in the middle. So as soon as I start putting that together I'll show you what that's going to look like. But those are cut and all I need is the shelf board which is laying in here somewhere that I can take. Uh, you, you'll see my video shortly about uh, doing the molding for the base molding. It's, that's all finished. I need to take that up to the house. But you'll see a video upcoming of me doing some of that. And then there's some other little things that I was doing today. Whatever the boss's whim is. Anything goes Saturday.
So the boss is out there doing her garden work. It is summer. I don't know why she has that flannel shirt on. I guess she's a little cool. I don't know. It's not really that warm out. It's probably like 65. Maybe that's why. But she wants to start to plant some stuff in there. Uh, she's sure that there's no frost going to come around.
guys, when you live out in the country, you can't expect to not have what's known as field mice. And I just want to show you this. I have been doing this for about, oh man, 30 years or better. I built a house for a lady one time and mice were getting in the house. Uh, she built it near a cornfield and the mice were really bad in the house and we couldn't figure how they were getting in because the house was built with a concrete slab. And uh, here we found out that the mice were coming in the corner posts of the vinyl siding and crawling all the way up the top and getting into the roof. So what I did was I figured out a way to solve that problem and what I do what I do is um, drill a little hole just bigger than the uh, nozzle that comes on that great stuff and then I spray that in there and what it does I hope you can see that is it closes up that hole and nothing can crawl up there you would be utterly amazed at how many mice crawl up and down the inside of this thing if it's not closed now on the, on the greenhouse here I didn't do the special things that I would do on a regular house but normally what I do is underneath the siding I put aluminum so that it's very slippery like a mouse can't really get a good grip on it so I usually put aluminum around the outside corners right before I put the uh, the vinyl on but this uh, putting this great stuff in here significantly stops that I know for Absolutely, we have no mice in the house. You know, sometimes with the garage door open, you'll get a mouse in there or something, or it'll come in on a car or whatever. But um, I've done this a lot, and it, it really stops the problem that you have with field mice. Just a little something in case, you know, somebody out there is having problems with them, because I was having some problems in the greenhouse. Of course, the major problem was that um, over here on this side, I had bullseye tied on a rope and bullseye decided to eat the whole corner post out on me. So I just put that piece on last night. So, but yeah, it, it, it works good. Um, if you, uh, I gotta get to the dump. If you uh, just drill a little hole about maybe four or five inches up and just take that great stuff on a, on a um, take the great stuff tube and just uh, put it in there, put it, stick it in the hole, try and get it as much as you can, but it, really this stuff is fantastic because it does a good job of filling in there. And you don't have to have one of these. Uh, I got this with a, oh man, I got this a long time ago with a Milwaukee reciprocating saw, I think. So it came in a box. I actually like this handle, it comes in handy. And then it's pretty easy to clean that off. Now I can't bend down here anymore, but uh, that's what it looks like up there. I'll have to look at the video to see how good I did. But anyway, you would be surprised. Um, I noticed that they had cha started changing how they put the corner posts together, and they're a little, they do have some with styrofoam in them already. Uh, the other thing is, I had made a, a, a aluminum things to put underneath the bottom of them, but they're, they're not as good as this great stuff is and every now and then I check it and the mice don't eat through that for some reason now, I'm not saying they won't eat through it. I said they don't eat through it so and here's the thing if you put the corner post up here Now it depends on how you do it normally What I like to do is after I put the roof on I like to put the soffit on the house right away As soon as the soffit's on then you can bump the corner post against the soffit now a lot of times guys will put the soffit on last so they'll start at the bottom with siding and when they put the corner, po corner post up they put the soffit around the corner post that's really when you get a lot of mice up in there there's no way to slow them down so I'm cleaning off the styrofoam because I had put this on last night I just want to get it cleaned up just thought I'd show you something in case it helps thanks a lot bye
Okay, so that's 116 pieces of base molding that are finished, and um, I need all of those. I'm going to need 116 pieces of crown molding as well. So uh, that's the end of the base as far as I'm concerned. Um, it's, uh, for those of you who might be un uh, you know, wondering about the 1037 uh, planer, uh, I had a little mishap with it last week. I didn't mention it before, but what happened was it, um, it broke one of the cutters on the uh, casing, one of the edges of the cutters, and it kind of juggled around inside there a little bit and wrecked the rubber rollers on both sides where the molding goes. Now it it still pulls the molding in and all but um, I'm probably going to have to replace them sometime in the future. I wasn't too happy about that but the cutter hit a knot and the knot was harder than what the cutter was able to do and I guess it broke it off. But anyway I need to shovel this stuff into the bucket and then I'll get rid of this and I'm going to take this up to the house that I'll be working on. So 116 pieces of base molding. You're looking at quite a bit of money there. Um, red oak molding this type, you're probably looking at, um, oh, I'd say 18 to 20 dollars a piece. And that would be for clearer molding. This uh, isn't perfectly clear, but there's some nice stuff here. I mean, in this, you know, there's a little check on this end, which I can't use, but, and a knot, but I can probably fill this knot with some filler. I want to get some good filler that uh, will hide all the imperfections but looking good I'm very happy with this because it would have cost me a fortune if I had to buy this stuff
not too thrilled with these shop vacs. I think the brand name uh, doesn't do it justice. Because I've never had one that lasted more than three years. And I've replaced this one. I bought it at the beginning of last month. Or the middle of the month, I should say. I had to take it back last week to get another one. Because it wore out. It wasn't just wasn't sucking. 